Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. You thought we were done with early Ixalan spoilers. Well, joke's on you because we're definitely not. Continuing from the ridiculous reveal yesterday, we have a ton to talk about. If you've missed previous Ixalan spoiler coverage, you can check an episode out right there. Just click the link on the screen and we talk all things pirates. So many pirates, it's absurd. Alright, without further ado, let's get this done. And if you enjoy the video, be sure to hit that like button. Helps out a lot. Sorceress Spyglass is two mana for an artifact. As enters the battlefield, look in an opponent's hand, then choose any card name. Activated abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. How interesting. Okay, so you get to look at your opponent's hand, but then name any card. You don't have to name something you see, which means you can use the information in their hand to figure out what they're playing and then name their best card. That alone makes me love this. This is one of the hate cards we've been missing in Standard. This is going to help keep crazy psycho activated abilities in check. We could have used this six months ago to be honest, but now that it's here we should be good. Sorcerer's Spyglass is instantly Standard playable as a sideboard staple. The more solved the format is, the better the Spyglass gets. This is a nice card. Vanquisher's Banner is 5 mana for an artifact. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus 1 plus 1. Whenever you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, draw a card. I mean, yeah. Another insane tribal card for Commander. I promise I'm not doing this on purpose, but the set just keeps printing cards that are meant for Commander. I mean, look at this thing. It's expensive, but you anthem your creature type and then draw cards when you cast them? Come on, that screams Tribal Commander. Ixlon, what are you doing to me? Is this Commander 2017.5 and I just didn't know until now? Not much more to say about this banner. Insane Tribal piece for all Tribal decks ever in the world ever. Carnage Tyrant is four of anything and two green for a 7-6 dinosaur with trample and hexproof and it can't be countered. Well, alright. Besides a board wipe of some kind, this Tyrant is just never gonna die. Six mana for a 7-6 isn't even that bad either, but it comes with two incredibly relevant keywords and protection from counter shenanigans. Simple card, sure, but Carnage Tyrant is an absolute beating. It'll just win limited games by itself, that's for sure, and I can easily see this card in standard as a reward in a ramp deck, or even a mid-range strategy that includes green. Carnage Tyrant is really hard to kill, and that has a lot of value. Worthy of the mythic tag for sure, keep an eye on this one. Deep Root Champion is 2 mana for a 1-1 one, one Merfolk Shaman. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the champion. Whoa, there's a lot going on here. First things first, this is like the prowess of all prowess abilities on a green Merfolk. Now I know that Kiora is a green Merfolk, but green Merfolk are certainly not the standard in Magic. Plus this green card comes with that trigger. Are they trying to create teamer prowess? Because if so, Deep Root Champion is a staple on that deck forever. Tribal be damned, the champion isn't meant for that nonsense. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it gets a counter. That's just crazy. I believe this is standard playable as long as the shell is there for this specific deck. It's teamer prowess or nothing for the champion. Emperor's Vanguard is 4 mana for a 4-3 human scout. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, it explores. Refresher. Explore means to reveal the top card of your library. Put the card into your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature, then put the card back, or put it into your graveyard. Another straightforward green card, but I already like Explore, and this time it comes on a decently sized body. You can tell from the cost and power toughness split that Explore raises this card's rarity significantly. Wizards clearly values that mechanic highly, because other than Explore, a 4 mana 4 3 is nowhere near rare status. I'm okay with this though. Explore, like I said before, is phenomenal. You either grab an extra land or your creature gets bigger and that's at worst. Love Explorer, cards real decent. Let's move on. Old Growth Dryads is one green mana for a 3-3 Dryad. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent may search their library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle their library. Hey, this is like the reverse Rogue Elephant, which by the way was in tournament decks at one point. Old Growth Dryads is interesting. You really have to decide what your deck is about. If you're playing a strategy that can legitimately let your opponent get a turn ahead of you in exchange for a 3-3 attack and on turn 2, then hey, the Dryads will work. But what kind of deck is that? Red-Green Aggro, Green Stompy, it has to be aggressive, low to the ground, and able to win before that acceleration you just gave your opponent kills you. I've mentioned it before, but Ixalan looks like it's going to breathe new life into aggro decks. Old Growth Dryads is playable in Standard, for sure in the right deck. Green Aggro, Red Aggro, Black Aggro, I'm terrified as a control player. 
Ripjaw Raptor is two of anything and two green for a 4 or 5 dinosaur with Enrage. Whenever it's dealt damage, draw a card. Enrage is a new mechanic from Ixalan and I am super happy to see it. I'll tell you what, green has always had trouble drawing cards, but Enrage builds card draw into green's primary focus, combat. Amazing design work here included in the set, and with that, Ripjaw Raptor is looking real nice. It can survive a lot with 5 toughness, and that high toughness means that it'll probably take damage more than once. Almost like they planned it that way. 4 mana for a 4 or 5 is passable, and with that card draw mechanic attached, I get the rare designation. Enrage has me pretty excited, and I don't even normally play green. That should tell you something. This is perfect design for this set. It's real impressive. Shaper Sanctuary is 1 green mana for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. All this card draw on green, there's so much card draw on green! And they're inserting it into the set in the most genius ways. Cheap enchantment, sure it doesn't protect those creatures, but it replaces them in your hand when they're targeted by, I assume, removal. Green insurance policy and a green stompy deck. This is a quintessential sideboard card dedicated to those matchups where you're up against a strategy that has a ton of single targeted removal. Green came to win in this set, same with red and black. I'm a little scared, honestly. What are we about to get into? Verdant Sun's avatar is 5 of anything and 2 green for a 5-5 five, five dinosaur avatar. Whenever the avatar or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. So this is what happens when you take a dinosaur in Tristani and they have weird dinosaur babies. The avatar comes down as a 5-5 five, five for 7 and gains you 5 life right off the bat. That's not bad. But then it gains you life for every other creature that enters the battlefield under your control, and it doesn't even say non-token, which means anything, any creature at all. This may be a little too expensive for standard, but who honestly knows anymore? If it can work, then this is a solid answer to more aggressive decks as long as you can ramp it out fast enough. We'll see. Either way, great card for limited and, obviously, commander. Waker of the Wilds is 2 of anything and 2 green for a 3-3 three, three Merfolk Shaman. You can pay X and 2 green to put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on target land you control. That land becomes a 0-0 zero, zero elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. So Awaken is about to leave standard, and the Waker brings it right back. What a way to give value to your mana and lands late game. Don't have any cards in hand? No problem. Here's a 6-6 six, six attacker with haste, or something even bigger. You don't even have to tap the wild, so if you need to make multiple land creatures to block, you can do that. Pretty versatile Merfolk Shaman we're looking at here. Clearly the best part about this is that nothing is until end of turn. Those are just creatures now. Turn after turn, you can make your entire land base lethal. Just get this in a deck with Rashin Meander and go nuts. Hilarious. Gashoth Sun's Avatar is 5 of anything, 1 red, 1 green, and 1 white for a 7-6 legendary creature dinosaur avatar with trample, vigilance, and haste. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of your library, put any number of dinosaur creature cards from among them onto the battlefield, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order? Whoa! What? Gashoth! You're insane! This is an absolutely ridiculous dinosaur commander. That ability's broken, it comes with haste so it can attack right away, vigilance so it can block immediately afterwards, and trample so that trigger is definitely going to activate, and when it does, you're just getting so many dinosaurs for free! So many dinosaurs all on the battlefield? This avatar is nutty as all heck, and a more than worthy commander for the dinosaur tribe. Seriously, all of them onto the battlefield, y'all. I'll start working on a deck right now. This is insanity. What if you had double strike? You get the trigger twice. Oh, okay. I'm done. I got to start building this. What a house. And that artwork. This set, though. Come on. This next card has already been eroded, so listen carefully. Hostage Taker is two of anything, one blue and one black for a 2-3 human pirate. When Hostage Taker enters the battlefield, exile another target artifact or creature until Hostage Taker leaves the battlefield. You may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast that spell. So when the card was printed, if it can exile any target artifact or creature, it can just exile itself. That creates an infinite loop, and the game ends in a draw. The rules team missed this, and it got to the printers, but they have added the errata, so it can target itself, fixing the issue, but not the printing, so sad. Anyways, the card itself is actually pretty strong. Think Oblivion Ring, but you get to take the card you just exiled and pay for it however you want. Now that's card advantage. Removal, then you get an extra card to play with, and probably something real strong to boot. Hostage Taker is a solid limited card, easy first pick, and decent in Commander as well. Nice pirating. Tishana, Voice of Thunder, is 5 of anything, 1 green and 1 blue for a legendary creature, Merfolk Shaman. Tishana's power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. You have no maximum hand size. When Tishana enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature you control. 
Okay, you know, when are they going to stop printing cards that are literally broken in Animar? Honestly, when? Because this commander is getting too absurd. We're already dealing with Prime Speaker Zagana and Master Biomancer in the same deck. Tashana might end up decking you for all we know. This card's just, it's crazy. It's dang crazy. I promise we're not a commander-only channel. We never have been. But the writing is on the wall, people. Ixalan is supporting commander more than any standard set I can think of in recent memory, with both legends and non-legends alike. If you're a commander player, you must be having the time your life right now this is total and utter absurdity i know i keep throwing a lot at you but what do you think about the green cards in the set i'm not gonna lie to you aggro and stompy are starting to look real dangerous in this upcoming standard meta like real dangerous i need to know how you're feeling so please let me know in the comments where are you on ixalan right now anything you want to play for sure i'd love to hear your thoughts also stay tuned for even more ixalan coverage it never ends i'm telling you and as always thanks for watching and we'll see you next time this video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. I feel bad talking about an expensive card here, but Animar just got an insane new toy, and that deck is already strong as heck. If you haven't had the chance to pick Animar up yet, it's only $22 right now. Cheaper than I thought, considering it's only ever been printed once in Commander. No year after that, just Commander. That's how long ago. If you're interested in building the Insane Elemental with Tishana about to come out, you can click the link on the screen. Helps the channel we all win. Enjoy.